The second single case visual tool is the code line browser. And as with the document portrait, you can pull this up either by clicking first on a document and going to the visual tools drop down menu and selecting the code line browser. And remember, if you go to the visual tools drop down menu and one of them is grayed out, it's because you haven't selected a document yet. So always first select the document and then go to the drop down menu in the visual tools to select code line or just right click on the document and right below the document portrait which we just talked about is the code line option and I can click on that. Now you first have some options here but before uh, I want to explain the options let's jump straight to the visualization so we can get a feel for it first. What you have here on the y-axis are all of your codes from your code system and as with uh, the code system, you can hide or show subcodes. And this specific uh, visualization is great for showing overlaps. Whereas the document portrait gives you in one picture a good overview of how often and how much of the text is coded with a certain uh, code, this is going to show you the overlaps. So we have the codes in the y-axis and the paragraph numbers on the x-axis. So we can see, for example, starting in paragraph 4, the text was coded as having to do with work issues from paragraphs 4 through paragraphs 10. Uh, the scroll bar on top here then lets us scroll through the paragraph numbers and still retain our uh, y-axis uh, information here. If I would use the, the Windows scroll bar at the bottom, I would lose those there. So this is why MaxQDA has this particular scroll bar, so you just move the paragraph numbers. And the overlaps we can see, for example, very easily here in paragraph 20. We see home life, relationships, key quotes, parents and siblings overlapping in a single paragraph. So we can go through and quickly see the difference and quickly see the overlaps in the different paragraphs. Now with the standard settings that I uh, just used, I can't aggregate automatically. And what that means is if I hide all the subcodes to interview guide topics, they won't be added or aggregated all on this top level. So if I do that, we don't see any of those subcode uh, bars here. So one of the options when you first open the code line. I'm going to close it and open the code line again. One of the options is to aggregate on the first level. And if I have activated codes, maybe I have a code system that uh, includes 500 different codes and my code line, I'm only interested in certain of those codes. I can go through, activate those codes first in the code system, and then select only for activated codes. So those are the only ones that will show up then uh, in my visualization. In this case, we want to aggregate on the first level. This is great if we have uh, categories that you want to compare. So for example, I have interview guide topics here and people and day-to-day -day issues as parent codes and key quotes. Uh, but it may be that I have uh, in each of, the, each of these parent codes are things that I want to compare across. So I could have a parent code called health, a parent code called home life, a parent code called relationships, and a bunch of subcodes for each of those. And then I want to compare them aggregated. So I select that option and click OK. And here you only see the parent codes. And the difference between this and the other is that all the subcodes have been added on that level. So remember the interview guide topics did, wasn't actually used as a code, just the subcodes had been used. But now because we've aggregated them on this level, we see the visualization of all those subcodes that were used. So because also because we know the colors, uh, we can see this was coded as work issues because it's orange, red is health, light blue is home life, and we're comparing then on that top level. Most of the time though, at least in my case, I don't want them aggregated. I want to be able to see those subcodes. And so as I go through, I'm seeing very specifically what overlaps. And this is also a case where you wouldn't have to have assigned colors. 
uh, because they're all on different levels. So they're all in different rows. So even if work issues was a different color, was not a different color than health, I would be able to see pretty easily what, what I had coded as work issues and what I had coded as health. Now the options here in the toolbar, the first one is to take a snapshot. And the nice thing about this is I can make the window exactly as I want it to be for my snapshot. So let's say I'm only interested in paragraphs 10 to 20. I can bring that over and resize this so that I'm only seeing paragraphs 10 to 20. And when I click on snapshot, it's going to take a picture of only that window. And once again, we can save it as a PNG file for easy import uh, to a website, to a Word file, to a PowerPoint presentation. The next option is to refresh. So maybe if I've uh, selected that I only want to include activated codes, and I then decide I want to add other codes, I can come down here, change my activations, and say I want to refresh. The third option, once again, is the info. So it takes me to that part of the uh, manual that explains all about this particular function. The red running man closes the window. And once again, this particular scroll bar is much more helpful than your standard Windows scroll bar because you keep these labels here for this axis. So that's the code line browser.